thing where it was what percentage? Are you that old? Hey. Hey. <laughs> John, how are you? Good. How you doing, man? Good. How's the family? Uh, they're good. They're good. All, I have three kids. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. My wife, uh, she said that's something you guys bonded over. Or my producer, sorry. Did you say your wife? Did you just call your producer your wife? She is my wife. <laughs> I, is is she's, that true? Yeah, she somehow snuck her way in here, and now, you know, when there's girls on the show, she fucking kills my game. Holy crap, it's, it's hard enough to be married. Now you got to work with your wife? <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be a pain in the ass. Yeah. Oh, man, you're telling me. Now you're going to get me in trouble, John. You bring your work home with you, I guess. <laughs> Unfortunately, huh? <laughs> uh, tell me, about, oh, anyway, what well, do you yeah, got going on tonight? Young. What do you got going on tonight at Bombay's? Oh, tonight at beautiful Bombay Bar and Grill at uh, the pregame comedy show. It's a really, it's a fun show. It's a, it's a nice room and... I, I did it once before, and, uh, you know, everyone should come down. It's on California Street in Ventura, and I probably won't hit the stage till like, 8, 8.30, but it starts at 7. Uh, how, how beautiful is Ventura? I love it. Although the last time I was there, like a schmuck, I decided to party a little hard and then <laughs> couldn't drive home, so so the guy that lived there parked my car, and, of course, they towed my car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on. Are, are, you, are you still... Uh, not drinking or smoking, or? Uh, yeah, I haven't been smoking uh, cigarettes, but uh, you smoke I weed. Do, I do still drink, but I I stopped for like two weeks and then and then kind of cut it down. I was at a level of, uh, you know, I was at a level of like ten, fifteen beers, fucking. Men. Oh, I just cursed. Am no, I allowed to? Yeah, you can say fuck. Yeah, I was like ten beers, like 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 almost every night. So I just finally said, screw it. I gotta, you know. Yeah. You know, you know I gotta cut down a little bit. So. For sure. Do you smoke weed? Oh, yeah. yeah. Look, I'm, I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Of course, weed. Um, where, yeah. Do you do you go to, like, a dispensary, or do you, or do, you do it the old school? Nah, nah, I don't. Like, I, I, I remember once I asked my OCD doctor for if I could get a prescription for weed, and he said, absolutely not. What? <laughs> they give it up I mean, for anything. Yeah, I know, but for some reason, I, I you know, he said no. I, I guess it doesn't help OCD. <laughs> Believe me, John, weed helps everything. There's not one I thing. I agree. And weed also helps my problem with my wife as my producer. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm you sure. just you smoke a little bit, and then she doesn't say nothing. I mean, she says something. You, know you just don't know. And you know what would all? You know what would also help? Um, earplugs. <laughs> Yeah, if I want to get my ass whooped. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, I mean, just uh, just to get friendly with you, um, uh, this is Stuttering John Melendez. He will be in uh, in Vent downtown Ventura on off of California Street at the Bombay's. Diego is a friend of ours, so tell him the Red Light District Show says hello. Um, and I just – we got a few questions. Um, I am curious – why don't you listen to the Stern Show? I've heard All right, interviews. Just, uh, hey, 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 Tim, do me a favor. We're just getting in my car, so it's gonna it's gonna shift over to the Bluetooth. Okay. All right, no problem. So just give me one second. Gotcha. Don't worry, it's not the question. I can give a crap about the question, but hold on a second. <laughs> uh, I know it's not. Gotta... No, I know that's not. He's super open, man. All right, cool. it's gonna transfer over. Hello, I'm I'm traveling with the comics now. This is one of my favorite parts of doing stand up. Is is going on the road with uh, you know my friends that are comics. Who's who's on the road yeah. with you tonight? I don't know. I'm on the radio, face. <laughs> are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, you're on the radio. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now we, okay, now we can talk. All right. Um, just a quick question. Uh, why don't you listen to the Stern Show? I've heard you in multiple interviews say that you just ever since you left, you stopped listening. Because when I went to serious, I didn't feel like paying to hear myself get insulted. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, John, does it break your heart that they, you know, they try to, they, they insinuate that your work there was nothing, it was meaningful or meaningless? Uh, you know, it's weird that you say that because I heard that and I also heard, uh, like they did, I guess, like the 
I don't know, like the like the starring John biography there or whatever, and and then and then Howard said some you know nice things. So I guess it's you know I, I don't know which way it is. I mean, on one of the shows I heard him say I was a major part of the show, and and uh, you know I wasn't like uh, you know I mean like you said I was, I was a feature player, and then on other days I'm an ingrate, I'm a loser, and everything else. So I mean, it can go either way. <laughs> yeah, I I, I I think it's just. In my opinion, Howard's a very uh, emotional guy, and he wears his heart in his sleeve. But if you actually had to sit down with him, man, your contributions to that show are, are priceless. Not just the wacky antics you guys did, but, I mean, just the every day-to-day life. And, you know, it was – it was it, it, like, honestly, I feel like I know you because of, of all the times I've listened and, and heard your, your life. And it's sort of like we're friends without knowing each other. Well, I wish my wife did. <laughs> I wish she knew me. I'd still be married. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, it was a, like, he, I've had private conversations with Howard after I, um, you know, announced my leaving, and he couldn't have been more complimentary. So, you know, uh, if, he, if he says a lot and things about me now, I mean, he, I don't care. It, you know, he can say whatever he wants. I mean, I, I don't... I had a good time there. I don't have anything, you know, I don't have any hard feelings. I mean, you know, so if, if he wants to go to the negative place, that's fine. Yeah. You know, but I, I know, I, I mean, I know I contributed and, you yeah, know, I also, sure. and I also was a writer there, you know, I wrote stuff there. So it wasn't only on air, it wasn't only the interviews, it was also, you know, I wrote jokes and bitch while I was there, you know? Yeah. And, and definitely your contribution. No, every Stern fan knows that your contributions are epic and, you know, it would never have been the same show without you. So always have uh, that. Thanks a lot, thanks. Hey, man, no problem. Uh, does it hurt you a little bit, like, like hearing the negative things that he has said? Especially because, you know, as a radio guy, you when you're in the studio with these guys, like, you're sharing your, your deepest part of your soul with them. And, like, I know when, when any of my guys leave, it, it fucking hurts. No matter what, you know, situation it is. Uh, uh so what's the question? <laughs> uh, d- d- are you are you hurt like when you hear like something like "Stuttering John is dead to me" when Howard says something? Oh, uh, like yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, it hurts. I mean, that's why I don't listen. <laughs> 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 well, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I mean, I guess the thing. I mean, it's like. It's like, it was like, it was like, you know, today, I mean, I, you know, I got a tweet from a guy who was like trashing me, and, uh, you know, I was like, Dad, stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, when you ended up going over to The Tonight Show, how much shit did, you know, the Los Angeles fans give you if they saw you in the street? Like, because the way Howard spun it is you went over to the enemy. Yeah, I don't get that at all. There are two different mediums. I don't, I don't get why... He would consider Jay Leno any like some kind of foe or anything. I mean, Jay used to call it the Howard Show every birthday show. I remember. I mean, and, and, I mean like Jay was, you know, he was like so. It's a thing because Jay's actually a really, really good guy, and you know, I know Howard speaks that Jay should have called him and asked him for permission. And the truth of the matter is, is that Jay asked me if I wanted him to do that. And I, you know, because I thought it should come from me. I just thought it would be weird from Jack and not me. That was, so that was my own mistake. Right. Yeah. I, I feel you. Um, <laughs> but here's the thing, Jay. Now, let's say I did it that way and Jay called. Then you see how it would have been a man me for not telling him first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I understand the situation. It's just a, it was a, it was a tough situation for all parties, you know, and, I mean, how awesome is it for you on your part to have worked with probably, arguably, the best guy in late night and the best guy in radio? And what have you learned specifically from each one of those that makes you a better, you know, talent? That makes you a better comic? Ta- talent. Like talent, just in general. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. It's just hard to hear. I'm, like, driving out there. Um, That's all right. Oh, I, I mean, the thing I loved about Howard was uh, that he was real. I mean, he talked about real things, and 
like I was a fan before I was ever on the show, and part of the reason, believe it or not, is that when I started to masturbate, I uh, I used to ask my friends if they masturbated, and they all said no. So I felt like I was some kind of weirdo or something. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I would listen to Howard, and he would talk about jerking off all the time. <laughs> so I was like... So I have something in common with this guy. Yeah. I'll be trying to have sex with an Nigerian jar, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what about Jay? It stays very badly. What about you and uh, what have you learned from Jay that was just, you know, that helped your career or helped you become a better, you know, talent? Uh, Jay, that show was very instrumental in just me how to um, craft jokes uh, in different forms, either in a monologue form or a, a drop-in, which is the thing that I, I guess, specialized when I was there. It's like a video joke. And so by practice and by watching Jay and by watching all the great writers and writers' assistants that I worked with, I, I was able to just, like, you know, I was around a lot of talented people, and and it, it was very, you know, a great environment just to learn about writing, you know, comedy. And that's, like, something that I did when I was at NYU and did at Stern, but, you know, Howard and Jay are, like, two different worlds. I mean, I always say it's like going from good video to Disney, you know? Yeah. Uh, did it ever cross your mind when you're out there doing the you know, interviewing the celebrities on the red carpet, did it ever cross your mind, like, I'm never going to be able to work in Hollywood again because I'm fucking pissing off everyone? Yeah, I'll never forget, I pulled the uh, buoy aside before I did the, <laughs> before I did the Ringo Star interview, and I was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm like a little nervous about doing this because, uh, you know, I really wanted to get a record deal. And, you know, he's like, I don't worry, I'm not getting who you are. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you know the interview, I asked, uh, Ringo, what did you do with the money? And he said, what money? I said, the money that your mom gave you for singing lessons. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when you're asking those questions, like, who's who's involved in that writing process when you guys are coming up with the questions for the celebrities? In the beginning, it was essentially just, uh, Jackie, Howard, and Fred. I mean, it was those three guys, and, and I commended him for coming up with some great questions, you know? And at the end, uh, I would pitch in, and a lot of other guys would pitch in, but at the beginning, it was just those three. And, uh, you know, and, and they came up with, the, you know, the great, you know, you know, questions for Jennifer Flowers and for Ted Williams and all those questions, so, you know, you know, my hat's off to them. Fucking geniuses, huh? Yeah, no, they're all very talented, and, you know, it was so funny is that we all grew up on Mad Magazine. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, one of the only reasons I went to church is that my dad used to bribe me and have the church with, you know, candy store, I'd get my, you know, copy of Mad Magazine. <laughs> he bribes you. Yeah, that, that's how it takes to get me to go to church, too. <laughs> um, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what happened with the Gotti movie? I saw a lot of hype in the beginning, and now I don't see anything. Is it shelved? Is like I don't. I was just curious about uh, that. I don't know. You maybe they're afraid to work with John Gotti. Are you what? Pardon me. I said maybe they're Hollywood's afraid to work with John Gotti. Who knows? Oh, Howard's afraid to work with John Gotti. No, no. Uh, weren't you putting it together? Well, yeah, but it was, I was just, it was really just my friend who was a producer, but we had a lot of dinners with uh, John Gotti Jr. He's actually really, you know, a nice guy, but I had the misfortune doing a typical starring John move. You know, you know, we were at dinner, and I, we actually had lunch at a pizza joint, and, and I was sitting next to John Gotti, and I, uh, I picked up a big slab of chicken parmesan, Dropped it on my plate and saw it splattered all over his suit. <laughs> and, that's yeah. what, and he got yeah, pissed and, and just left? It. And then he looked at me and said, Do you realize you just fucking spilled sauce all over my suit? <laughs> 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 I 
So oh. let's just say I, I spilled something else all over the my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Um who's, Exactly. <laughs> who's going <laughs> who's gonna be on stage with you tonight? Well, I'm still driving with two up and coming talented comics. Uh, uh, one of the writers' assistants who should have been a writer when he was there, he got a lot of stuff on it. Uh, Derek Jones, who is a very talented comic and writer, and uh, Mike Lee, who is a very talented comic and writer. And I'm also going with uh, my latest discovery, uh, this comic called Jeff Lynn, who is a very talented comic and writer. And he's going to be on the show with me. And uh, we're going to have a great time. And then I'm going to have a great time. And then I'm going to have a great time. And then I'm going to have a great time. And then that's what talented and funny, and then there's a couple more guys there, uh, Greg Fields and Dick something other. <laughs> Sounds like a good night, huh? At Bombay's, two nights, starting at 7 o'clock. Um, stuttering John yeah, Melendez will be there. Is, and and, 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 and you know, the good thing is, is that after every show, I always hang out at the bar. And, you know, and, 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 and I always drink with the whoever comes to the show, and, and, I, and I'll answer any questions that they have. All right, man. We're going we're gonna to send traffic this that way, and after our show, we're going we're gonna to bring some guys that way. You know, I don't care about the guys. Just bring the weed. <laughs> uh, we have that. Don't worry. That is covered. <laughs> and, here in Ventura, we don't call it weed. We call it marijuana. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. And that's what I like about the show. We don't call it weed. We call it medical marijuana. Yeah, bring, bring us a team so I can drive home. All right. <laughs> we got you. All right. Um, a couple more questions. What games do you play on your cell phone? What games do I play on my cell phone? Yeah. Uh, I play this game called Tinder. Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> that is the ultimate game. Yeah, it's, it's hard to do when I'm driving, but you don't want to know what I'm swiping with. All right. When you do that and you're stuttering, John, do like, do you just get a bunch of pussy off that? Like where it just becomes bored? I haven't gotten one piece of tail off you're the tinder. You're lying. You are lying, John. There's no, no way. No, I, I, I can most of my tail on farmersonly.com. <laughs> hey. Yeah, there's a bunch of pigs on there. <laughs> All right, what is your goal right now? Like, in this stage of your life, what do you want? What do you want to get out of life? Career-wise. I want to make it there without getting a DUI. What? Making the I want to make it to the gig without getting a DUI. <laughs> All, right. All right, do you have any movie suggestions for the people out at home? Yes, I love to set. Pardon me? I love the movie Seth. Seth? Seth and Seth. Okay. Movie it's, suggestion. It's with John Favreau, Scarlett Johansson, Sophia the Guard, Dustin Hoffman, John Lake Wazamo. Well, I haven't seen it. I'll check for sure. Check it out. All right. Hey, listen, it, 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 I mean, listen. You and your wife after this call, put the movie on, and then she'll. I love it so much that she won't even talk for about two hours while she's watching. <laughs> That's why he loves it. Okay. That, okay, I am. I am about that. All right. Um, I have two more questions for you. Um, has any of your sports teams changed since moving out to California? Uh, I'm still an avid New York Giants fan. I like the Jets. I love the Yankees. I don't really give a crap about hockey, but I took my kids to a team game, and this was the season that they first won. Yeah. And it was short, and it was short of season, and it was like nobody there. It was like only like a quarter full. And, and I bought my kids jerseys, and that year they won. So, I, yeah, I, you know, I'll put the Kings along with the Islanders and the Rangers as my hockey team. Okay, you like the New York Giants and the New York Jets, even though they're not from New York, and you are from New York. Well, what do you want me to like, the Bills? Of course! <laughs> that is the only New York team, John. There is no other New York team besides the Bills. Dude, do you know that if you go to a Bills game, everyone in the stands, that's the entire population of Buffalo. <laughs> I know! I am a Buffalo <laughs> Bill fan from California. I love... <laughs> go Rex Ryan. No, I was I've been a Giants fan... 
when you were playing in New York, so it's okay. All right, I guess it's all right. Um, and I, here's my last question for you. Uh, don't forget, Southern John Melendez will be at Bombay's Ventura Bombay's. So please go out and see him, show some support. Um, John, do you, do you have any regrets on your career so far? You want to go sign this interview? Do I have any regrets? Uh, yeah, I, I regret that I didn't, um, I didn't play high school football. And the reason being is I didn't reach puberty until 11th grade. And they need all the kids and all the boys to hang with other boys. And I didn't, want my, I didn't want my whole high school career to be known as a baldy. <laughs> and that's the truth. Uh, all right, John. Well, good luck tonight. Thank you so much. We're, we're honored and humbled that you would do the interview. Thank you. Good luck, man. Go break it. Hey, thanks a lot, man. I'll see you tonight. All right, see ya. Bring us a team. All right, for sure. Weed. We got you. All right, you got it. Medical Bye. marijuana. And that was that. That was good. He's it funny. Was, yeah, uh, it was a good one. You can't really hear over the Bluetooth uh, some of the yeah. questions. So see exactly what he said. The reason why he wouldn't listen to the show afterwards is because he doesn't want to hear all the shit talking. That's exactly what I was about to say. I would. I know once I was left, oh, it'd be like, oh, now you guys really want to know how I feel about Jesse. Here we go. And I would just <laughs> couldn't hear that shit every week. Fuck that. To, yeah, yeah, couldn't do it. You think we'd go that way with you? Oh man, if I, I mean, if I left the show, like obviously. It's either I left because I felt I could do better somewhere else or I got kicked off. So, yeah, I think you guys would go there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We got uh, 34 minutes, so fucking show time. I need some time to uh, unwind and do some shit. Uh, please tune in. And 34 minutes or 24 minutes. Oh, 34 minutes. I don't know time, obviously. And go see John Melendez tonight. Thank you. This is Red Light District Show. Presents. Wow.